Hello everyone, and welcome to this Diablo 3 Dungeon Guide for the Witch Doctor Helltooth Harness Set. We'll be going over how to set up your character, and I'll also explain how to complete both primary dungeon objectives. Keep watching until the end to see a full playthrough of the entire set dungeon with additional tips. To get started, let's first take a look at the set bonuses so we'll know how to gear out our character. This set revolves around the Wall of Death skill to provide a damage bonus to several skills including Poison Dart, Piranhas, and Wall of Death, all of which we will use in our build. When enemies are hit by these skills, a damage over time effect is applied to them from the two-piece set bonus, and a toughness bonus is applied to our character from the four-piece set bonus. Wall of Death has an eight-second cooldown, and it will be the main damage dealing skill, as required by the set bonus and by one of the primary dungeon objectives, in which it needs to be applied to large groups of monsters. This dungeon is also relatively large, so high mobility will be critical to enable clearing it in time. Therefore, in summary, cooldown reduction, movement speed, and toughness are the main priorities for the gearing and skills setup. In this setup, we are using five of the six set pieces in the shoulders, torso, hands, legs, and feet slots. In the head slot, we have Leoric's crown, which provides increased cooldown reduction with a diamond equipped in the helm. In the wrist slot, we take Lakumba's ornament, which provides a significant increase to toughness. And in the waist slot, we have Vigilante belt. This belt does not have a legendary power associated with it, but it does come with an inherent cooldown reduction stat. In the main hand slot, we have Sacred Harvester, which provides extra damage and toughness through extra stacks of the Soul Harvest skill. And in the offhand slot, we have Shukrani's Triumph, which provides a huge boost to movement speed via the Spirit Walk skill. In the next slot, we have Mara's Kaleidoscope, which provides immunity to poison damage. One of the primary dungeon objectives requires us to avoid taking any poison damage. This amulet will completely negate this objective, making it much easier to complete the dungeon. It is not recommended to attempt the dungeon without it. In one of the finger slots, we have Convention of Elements, which provides an occasional damage boost. And in the other finger slot, we have Retchel's Ring of Larceny, which will provide a movement speed increase after fearing monsters with the Horrify skill. When it comes to rerolling stats on the gear, the top priority is cooldown reduction. Then take anything that increases toughness or damage output. For Kanai's Cube in the weapon slot, we have Engium, which provides significant increased cooldown reduction after killing elite monsters. In the armor slot, we take Aquila Kuras, which provides a significant increase to toughness when near maximum mana. We will spend virtually no mana during the dungeon, so this buff should be easy to maintain. And in the jewelry slot, we have Ring of Royal Grandeur, which allows us to gain the 6-piece set bonus while only having 5 of the 6 set pieces equipped. For gems, we have a diamond in the head slot for cooldown reduction, topazes in the torso and leg slots, and an emerald in the weapon slot. For legendary gems, we have Bane of the Powerful for increased damage and toughness, Esoteric Alteration for increased toughness, and Molten Wildebeest Skizzard for increased life regeneration. For Paragon, the main priorities are movement speed and cooldown reduction. Next, let's go over the skills. We'll be using Wall of Death, which is mandatory for the dungeon. We take the Communing with Spirits rune for its 6 second duration. One of the primary dungeon objectives requires killing groups of enemies with a single use of this skill, so the longer it lasts, the better chance we'll have of completing the objective. Next, we have Spirit Walk with the Severance rune, which provides increased movement speed. This skill makes completing both primary dungeon objectives much easier, particularly if you do not have Mara's Kaleidoscope equipped. Spirit Walk phases our character out to the Spirit Realm for its duration, allowing us to run through enemies and through areas of poison. Next, we have Soul Harvest with the Languish Rune for increased damage and toughness. Then, we have Poison Dart with the Flaming Dart Rune, which we'll use to deal damage outside a Wall of Death. Next, we have Piranhas with the Piranado Rune, which we'll use for its crowd control mechanic, mostly only in emergency situations to avoid taking hits. And then, we have Horrify with the Stalker Rune for another crowd control mechanic and some additional movement speed. For the passive skills, we have Grave Injustice, which provides some good cooldown reduction. Next, we take Confidence Ritual and Pierce the Veil. Both of these skills provide increased damage output. And lastly, we take Jungle Fortitude for increased toughness. Now let's go over the dungeon objectives. The first primary dungeon objective is to kill 20 enemies with a single Wall of Death four times. The approach to this objective changes depending on if you have the Mara's Kaleidoscope Poison Prevention Amulet equipped. If you have it, then you'll group up monsters, cast Wall of Death a single time, then just stand in the middle of its area of effect, letting monsters funnel towards you to be killed off by it. With the amulet equipped, you will be immune to the poison damage left behind from dead enemies. However, if you do not have the amulet, you will need to avoid this damage for the sake of the second primary dungeon objective. So after grouping up enemies in a tight pack, you'll cast Wall of Death a single time, banning monsters for a brief moment, then you'll need to run out of the area. You may need to use the Spirit Walk skill to get past monsters or avoid imminent poison damage. You should run outside the Wall of Death area of effect to the opposite side of the greatest number of residual enemies, such that they will need to travel through the Wall of Death to reach you. You'll usually need to kite monsters into the area of effect like this to kill 20 of them. To group up enemies, avoid narrow passageways and look for wider, open areas with room to run around. You'll generally need at least two separate packs worth of monsters to have enough for 20 total. When you see a high density of monsters, run through them initially to gain their attention, looping around as needed to avoid getting hit, while grouping them up as tight as practical before casting Wall of Death. 
The smaller enemies particularly may lose interest in pursuing you quite frequently, so you may need to kite the monsters around to coax them up together. You'll need to be extra careful to avoid poison attacks and to avoid just getting hit in general. Having the Mara's Kaleidoscope Amulet and High Toughness will make completing this objective much easier. The second primary dungeon objective is to not take any poison damage. Again, if you have Mara's Kaleidoscope equipped, you don't have to worry about this objective at all. However, if you don't have it, it's still possible to complete. There are two sources of poison in the dungeon. First, the smaller Betrayed and Accursed monsters, when killed, will explode and leave behind a pool of poison. In order to avoid this attack, you will constantly need to stay on the move. If you stand still for too long, then you are vulnerable to having one of these monsters explode underneath your feet. There are tons of these monsters all over the dungeon, and they will constitute the majority of your 20 enemy pools to complete the first objective. The poison left behind when they die is the reason why you need to run out of the Wall of Death area of effect when completing the first objective, trying to kite monsters through it while constantly staying on the move by stutter stepping away from monsters. The other source of poison comes from elite monsters. Elites will frequently spawn a couple of green puddles on the ground. After a few moments, these puddles will have lines of poison that emanate outwardly from each of them in four diagonal directions. During the first few moments that the puddles are spawned, it is safe to run across them, but these puddles are the warning to get out of the area and you should follow it. As soon as you see one, get far away, because it can be difficult to avoid the lines of poison, and it is easy to get trapped with nowhere to go. Use the spirit walk skill often to phase out and traverse across areas of poison and through monsters to avoid danger. It's worth noting that elites will also frequently summon two purple circles on the ground. After a few moments, if you step in one of the circles, then it will teleport you through a wormhole to the other one, potentially dropping you right into a pool of poison. For these reasons, elite monsters are a top priority and should be killed off quickly so they don't cause unnecessary problems. Next, let's take a look at the dungeon map. I've broken the map up into four segments. Segment number one takes us to the first main intersection. From there, we'll follow segment number two in a large loop back around to the same spot. Segment 3 then takes us to the next intersection, where the dungeon will be finished off with the last loop of segment number 4. There are several narrow passages that can make it difficult to group enemies up for the first primary dungeon objective. While groups of 20 enemies can be found just about anywhere throughout the dungeon, there usually aren't many good opportunities. Therefore, there are a few areas that should be given additional focus to help ensure you can complete the grouping objective. These locations are generally wider than the other passages and will provide more opportunities for monsters to funnel towards you and be affected by your walls of death. Before attempting the dungeon, get familiar with the map and route so you won't inadvertently kill monsters near these key areas and ruin your attempt. So now that you have the setup and you know how to approach the dungeon, let's head to it. Go to Act 1, then to the Royal Crypt's Waypoint. From there, head northeast. Once reaching the end of the path, take a left. The dungeon entrance is just to the right prior to the portal to the Crypt of the Skeleton King. And next, we'll look at the playthrough. For this run, I went with very bare bones gear to demonstrate techniques. Any additional items or stats that you get consistent with the recommendations earlier will give you a much easier time completing the dungeon. Once inside the dungeon, head to the first area and check to see if there's high density. In our case, there isn't, and there's an elite monster. Elites can be pretty dangerous if you don't have the Mara's Kaleidoscope Poison Prevention Amulet equipped, so if you see one relatively singled out, go ahead and kill them off so they don't cause problems. This looks like plenty of density for a 20 enemy pool. Run into the group and cast Wall of Death in a position where most monsters will need to run through its area of effect to reach you. Then stutter step away from the pack so you don't get hit by poison left behind once the monsters die. Use Spirit Walk if you need to cross any spots filled with poison. You will be immune to all damage while the skill is active and you're phased out. Just make sure to wait for poison to dissipate if Spirit Walk is on cooldown. Now we move up to the next main zone, and there looks to be good density here too. In this case, we got stuck in monsters and had to cast Wall of Death prematurely to avoid taking fatal damage. Just follow the same positioning philosophy, and we were able to get group number 2 of 4. We'll be back to that intersection once we loop around the dungeon, so it's okay to leave monsters behind there. Remember to use Horrify or Piranhas to help crowd control enemies if you get stuck in tight spots like we did at that last location. Use Horrify where possible since it won't inadvertently kill enemies. Several single monsters in this stretch. If you don't see high density on your minimap, just kill these and move on. Here's a larger group. Run through them first, then cast Wall of Death, letting the monsters run through it while you stay on the move, stutter stepping away. And we were able to get group number three of four. Clean up any residual enemies once you're done with a large group. This stretch of the dungeon is a very narrow passageway. You generally won't be able to get a large enough group here to hit 20 enemies.
Remember to use Spirit Walk to pass through areas of poison. Spirit Walk again. Here's another Elite. Go ahead and take them down. Make sure to stay away from the poison puddles they summon. If you see two circles, get away from the area. Try to run to a spot that doesn't contain other monsters. We're still looping around in segment number two of the dungeon map, and we'll be back through to kill the monsters we passed. Here's another Elite without high density in the area. Just kill them off. Here's a pack of monsters, but it doesn't look like there's another one nearby, so go ahead and just kill them off. It's not worth trying to coax the monsters in this dungeon to travel long distances. Many of them will stop pursuing you. Plus, there was an elite there too. A couple of smaller groups here. There doesn't seem to be enough of them. Plus, there's a narrow passageway, so just kill these off. Here's a couple of larger groups. Run through them, cast Wall of Death, and kite them through. There was really high density there, so it didn't require much effort. Just make sure to steer clear of the poison explosions. Use Spirit Walk to get to a safe area when needed. We're heading forward through segment number 3 of the dungeon map. Now with the first primary dungeon objective completed, all we need to do is finish clearing the remaining enemies while staying disciplined to avoid poison damage. Another single elite. And here's segment number 4 of the dungeon map, the final loop. Use Spirit Walk often for a run speed boost, in addition to using it to help get out of danger. Its cooldown is relatively short, so it should generally be available when you really need it. With the first primary dungeon objective completed, we can now cast Wall of Death without needing to run through monsters first. This really helps with clearing enemies if you cast it so that monsters need to run through the area of effect to get to you. Remember, you can cast Horrify, particularly on Elites, to keep them crowd controlled while you kill them off. Don't assign a follower for this dungeon. They will just get in the way and interfere with your grouping attempts. Just a few monsters left. And we're done. Good luck trying to finish this one. If you enjoyed the guide and would like to see more content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.